hello everyone. Welcome again uh, to the Fusion EP Talks, a student-led web, uh, webinar platform for sharing knowledge about nuclear fusion science and engineering. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, uh, Ms. Karina Tieva. She obtained her MSc degree in 2015 from uh, Peter the Great uh, St. Petersburg Polytechnic University. Uh, her project during her MSc was devoted to the implementation of a charge exchange recombination spectroscopy diagnostics on the global sense for culture command. She then joined the Plasma Physics and Fusion Energy Group at the Denmark Technical University, where she worked as a PhD student on the investigation of the high-speed molecular beam injection into K-star plasmas for the gas fueling purposes. Currently, she is a postdoc researcher based at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory and, and under guidance of scientists from General Atmics working on the integrated plasma modeling of NSTX plasmas. So without uh, further delay, I give the floor to Galina. Uh, welcome everyone and enjoy the talk. Thank you very much. I will share my screen first. So I'm very excited to tell you more about the project, what I'm working on as a postdoc. As you can see, it is about the integrated code transport modeling. And I will talk about different numerical codes, how they coupled inside the on-field workflow and I will demonstrate examples how we use this workflow for the NSTX code transport analysis. I would like to start uh, describing my a bit interesting position in this project. So somewhere on the west coast of US, there is General Atomics Company, which is likely known as the home of the D3D tokamak. But it also should be known as a place where the on-fit workflow has been designed and actively used for the integrated modeling, in particular D3D plasma. Uh, briefly, on-fit it is a software which helps scientists to concentrate more on the scientific and physics problem rather than writing different scripts to load the data, to couple different codes, to read and save the outputs. So it is really powerful tool for the integrated plasma analysis. And one of the main goals of this project was to bring the expertise from the General Atomics Company to another place in the US to the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, where another project, what is called NSTX, is located. So NSTX or NSTX U upgrade. It is spherical tokamak, which is also a tokamak as a D3D, but slightly different. I will explain why we are so excited about spherical tokamaks. But to achieve the goal and provide the support and tools for robust and routine equilibrium reconstruction and transport analysis on NSTX, First, I learned how to use the on-feed and uh, what is the best practice. And then I has been sent to the Princeton Plasma Laboratory, where together with the local team, uh, we are trying to understand the specific of NSTX project. And when all together we are working on the adapting the on-feed workflow to the specific of NSTX device, and to the specific scientific goals of the NSTXU project. This is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I will explain why do we study spherical tokamaks, what is the advantages compared to the conventional tokamaks, when I will talk more about the on-fit and how we use it for the integrated modeling and demonstrate the workflow for NSTX analysis. So, um, <clears throat> spherical tokamaks, it is a spherical, it is a tokamak with a low aspect ratio, which is a measure of the uh, major plasma radius to the uh, minor radius. And it has been discovered what spherical tokamaks, they have several advantages compared to the conventional machines. First of all, it's a compact size when it is increased in stability and confinement. And it's a better utilization of magnetic field 
which is measured by as a ratio of the plasma pressure to the magnetic pressure. All of these advantages, they make the spherical tokamaks to be considered as a leading candidate for the steady state compact fusion pilot plan. Uh, spherical tokamaks, they explore different operational space, the low aspect ratio operational space, uh, to advance the physics for the next step devices. But many features of the low aspect ratio and together with the high beta leads to a different transport on STs compared to the conventional machines. You can see the example of the confinement scaling versus plasma collisionality. And you can see where scaling for the spherical tokamaks starts to deviate from the Italic scaling or the scaling for the conventional machines. Uh, that's why to extrapolate the results from the current devices to the next step devices, we need to better understand the physics and what cause the difference in the confinement scaling. And we also need to develop the predictive tools what span aspect ratio. This is a areas where we're trying to actively contribute. Uh, when we do the plasma modeling and trying to understand the transport mechanisms, we know what each model is not ideal, but usually we want to have the most comprehensive and complete picture as much as possible. To do it, we couple different models in the self-consistent integrated solution. I listed several components of the integrated transport analysis. Uh, first of all, we always need to know the magnetic equilibrium uh, when we have the current diffusion evolution, what usually happens on the slow time scales. Uh, there are some transport processes in plasma. It might be collisional or turbulent transport happening on the fast time scales. And we need to know the plasma response on the external heating sources, also gas puffing or any external actuators. Therefore, coupling of different models and different mechanisms uh, spanning through various time scales uh, will pose to some challenges. Uh, first of all, the, a lot of diagnostic data which need to be analyzed, usually it includes fetching, filtering, averaging, fitting of the data. Because uh, any numerical code would require some input data. That's why to run different numerical codes, it is time consuming to prepare the input files and manage the code runs, when to store the data and provide the data exchange between different numerical tools, in particular between uh, data analysis tools, equilibrium reconstruction and transport codes. And one of the most important steps in the numerical analysis it is benchmark and validation of the numerical tools which we usually do by comparison with experimental data. That's why we need um, scripts, which will show us the comparison of numerical results with experimental data, ideally on each step of the integrated workflow. Uh, to deal with all of these challenges, we use the OMFIT software. OMFIT, it's abbreviation of one modeling framework for integrated task. It is a Python software, which allows user to couple different numerical uh, tools into uh, various workflows. It has some advantages. Uh, first of all, it's a graphical interface. You can see the example, how it looks like. We usually have uh, some GUIs where it's pretty easy to understand what type of um, actions you're going to do. We usually have some 
extended description what you which code you are run by clicking with button or which options you have to select for your transport analysis. Uh, Onfit organized into modules and they can be combined in different combinations. Here, the example, usually I use a module what is called the kinetic fit time. We use this module to obtain the full kinetic equilibrium reconstruction. That's why it includes the EFIT code. It includes the onfit profile tools for the experimental data analysis, trans, which is the transport code. Any of them can be used separately or standalone, or they can be combined with our modules. Depends on the scientific purpose. Uh, onfit supports the tree structure and uh, it's very easy to access any item in the tree and do some manipulation for instance change the value or combine it with our outputs onfit um, <clears throat> is installed on different clusters it has some specific modification for different machines such as DFD, NSTX, ASDEX, JET, MAST. This is what I'm aware about. Uh, one of the best things about Onfit, what it has a lot of documentations and tutorials, which can be found on the web page. Uh, it has a GitHub page where people usually able to communicate and discuss some issues or ideas what they want to improve, contribute, or change in the workflow. Uh, and now I will move on to the particular example how we use the onfit for the integrated core transport modeling of NSTX plasma. You can see it would include the equilibrium reconstruction, uh, transport codes analysis or simulations, what we do to get the more accurate constraints for the equilibrium construction for the previous step. And then we do the prediction of plasma profiles. Uh, this is the diagram which shows the workflow. Uh, we spend a lot of time to get the accurate full kinetic equilibrium reconstruction. To do it, uh, we usually start from the initial equilibrium when we do the analysis of experimental data. And together with equilibrium, we provide it as an input for the transport codes. We run transport codes to get the more accurate information of the total plasma pressure and current density distribution. When we use this information to improve our equilibrium reconstruction from the previous step by adding additional more accurate constraints we can repeat this uh, cycle as many times as needed usually it requires around four iterations for nstx to see what the results on the next iteration is not significantly different from the previous one what means we obtain the self-consistent solution. And uh, when we have the accurate equilibrium, we can do the mapping of experimental data and use it uh, as a target for the predictive transport modeling, where we use what is called the TGR solver, which uh, runs the TGLF model for the estimation of the turbulent transport and NEO model for the neoclassical transport. I will show in more details after how it happens. Uh, starting from equilibrium reconstruction, uh, this is a starting point for any data analysis and many numerical codes, they require uh, information about the magnetic flux surfaces because they use it as a grid. To get equilibrium reconstruction, we use the EFIT code which solves the Grad-Chatelain equation. And um, 
To solve the Grasha Franz equation, we provide some experimental data as a constraints. We can provide just the magnetic data for Yefit reconstruction. And in this case, we will get the accurate um, information about the plasma storage energy and plasma boundary. Because if we use only uh, external magnetic data, the no information about uh, internal plasma configuration. That's why to get the accurate uh, current and pressure profiles, we run what is called the kinetic effect, where in addition to the magnetic data, we need to provide the data of the MSC diagnostic for the current uh, profile reconstruction and kinetic profile information. Uh, we usually get it from the diagnostic measurements, such as Thomson scattering for the electron density and temperature and charge exchange in combination spectroscopies for ion pressure. Uh, to get the equilibrium reconstruction through OMFIT, we use the module, what is called the EFIT time, time because we usually do reconstruction not for one particular time slice, but uh, for as many as we need and usually for entire shot. OMFIT generates the input files or what is called the K files. It is uh, input files for the EFIT code, which contains uh, information of all available diagnostics. Uh, we can do it in two different ways. We can load the existing one, because usually we already have something on MDS plus with initial reconstruction, or we can generate it through the OMAS, which provides the uh, uh, compatibility of your data structure with IMAS standards. OMFIT provides the opportunity to page preview and modify the constraints. You can see example of the GUI. We can change the weight of each magnetic sensors if we believe what some of them maybe didn't work properly, or we want to increase the weight and kind of ask if it to match and fit with data uh, better. Uh, we can see the each channel from the uh, MSC diagnostic, we can see the arrow for each channel. And usually we also apply the um, electric field correction to the data and we can see how much will be the difference. Through the on-fit workflow, we automatically add the pressure and current constraints when they available after transport code simulations. And of course, we have a special button where we run the feed code and generate the equilibrium for the single time slice or the multiple time slices. Uh, one of the most important part of the transport analysis, it is the data consistency check and validation of the results. To understand how accurate the equilibrium reconstruction what we got, we usually look on different uh, metrics. First of all, it's a convergence error, which shows how different the results of the equilibrium between different iterations. Usually we expect to see the decrease of the convergence error with the number of iterations. Uh, if it saturates, at some point, it means we got the minimum or we just need to change some settings or check our input files, what they're correct. Usually we're trying to get with error as low as 10 to the minus four or several orders magnitude lower if you need to do the accurate MHD analysis. Another metric, it is chi-square for magnetic diagnostics. It is measure of the deviation of the equilibrium solution from the magnetic data. Through the on-fit workflow, we can easily 
see the chi square for each magnetic center sensor around the tokamak cross section. Uh, by doing this, we check if any of the center sensors had the uh, too large arrow or maybe the array of probes which systematically provides a much higher error compared to the rest. When it would indicate what we need to talk with diagnosticians and if they confirm what something was wrong with particular probe, we can remove it from the input key files by changing the weight and set it to zero. And then at the end, it will improve the, our total quality of our reconstruction. We also compare the um, experimental measurements from MSC diagnostic with results of the EFIT reconstruction. So this is one of the examples, the blue dots, it's a experimental points and the red, what we got from the EFIT reconstruction. If we see such disagreement, it means Again, we need to check our input files, what all of the variables are correct, or we can try to increase the weight of MSC measurements compared to the magnetic diagnostics. Because right now, if it is trying to match kind of different input data, and we can say what, okay, we need the much better agreement with MSC. Uh, this is the same results. It shows the reconstructed current. We can see what it's inside of the arrow bar um, closer to the edge and the some disagreement in the core. Probably we need to reevaluate our settings for with core channels. Uh, to reconstruct accurately uh, total plasma pressure and current density profile, we usually run the transport code because the kinetic pressure measured by diagnostics, uh, which are Thomson scattering and charge exchange recombination spectroscopy, they do not include the contribution of the fast time into total pressure. And you can see example for the NSTX, uh, what for NSTX conditions, the contribution of the fast ion to the total pressure can be around 60% at the core. So it's important to run the new beam coupled with the trans code to get the total plasma pressure and use it as a pressure constraints on the next EF iteration. And for the current density profile, we need the more accurate constraints at the plasma age where the contribution of the bootstrap current can be significant. And we also get with constraints from the trans simulations. So trans, it is a uh, transport code developed at Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. It's a 1D plasma transport code. 2D for equilibrium and 1D for the plasma density, energy, momentum. So trans solves fluid equations for the poloidal flux diffusion, particle energy, and momentum balance in the very simple form I can write it like this. Uh, we usually prescribe from experiments uh, the experiment such values as the plasma density, temperature, and uh, we have the models to simulate the sources. For instance, for NBI heating, we use the new beam model. Uh, on the right-hand side, we also should include the sinks uh, due to atomic processes and uh, coupling between ions and electron channels for the um, heat balance. We have um, 
divergence of the flux, which is proportional to the diffusion coefficient and the gradient of the experimental profiles. I don't try the convection part here because usually for NSTX and even for D3D conditions, uh, which with convection part is very small. So by running the transport codes, we usually get the distribution of the heat sources. We solve the poloidal um, flux diffusion to get the current density profile. And we usually obtain the transport coefficients and the total fluxes. Uh, if someone worked with a transport code, they know what it requires a lot of input data and running, executing a lot of additional codes to prepare data in the um, format acceptable by trans. In uh, through OnFit, it's uh, much easier to do it because OnFit handles uh, the complexity of the trans name list. We have the user-friendly interface where it is much easier to understand which settings correspond, um, which particular settings you want to change in the name list according to your scientific goal. We usually have a help button providing the more detailed description. Uh, through the onfit, we also automatically create the U files, which contains the experimental profiles and uh, provided as the input for the simulations. And then at the end, um, all of the outputs they are automatically loaded in the onfit tree and can be used in the EFIT um, reconstruction on the next iteration. To run trans and do the transport analysis, we uh, need to provide the input data. So we need to do the comprehensive analysis of our experimental profiles. We use the, what is called the onfit profile tools, which has a lot of uh, scripts and opportunities to interact with data. Usually by clicking just one button, we load all available data from MDS Plus server. When we able to do the mapping from the physical coordinates to the flux surfaces, when we do a lot of, we have opportunity to do different visualization. Uh, you can see some examples. We usually compare different time slices. We can see how accurate our fitting uh, we can compare different diagnostics and we have some 2D qualities as a function of the flux coordinates in time. On fit profile tools, it's uh, very fast and usually we analyze the entire shot in um, There are some features of the onfit profile modules. First of all, as I said, it's integrated with experimental uh, database. We load all available diagnostic uh, for supported devices. When onfit implies what is called the temporal treatment of the data, uh, we load the diagnostic data for different diagnostics, they might be on different time frames. Sometimes we also apply the end filtering if we want to remove the data um, according to the M cycles. When we do mapping of this data to the closest equilibrium and only after we do the averaging and put different diagnostic uh, measurements on the same time frame. Onfit supports the library of various fitting methods. You can see how it looks like. Usually we choose the fitting method. We have some settings to adjust it 
to particular type of the profiles. We can plot the data and we can also compare the different feeding methods, see the chi-square error and then to identify which one um, is the best approximation for the particular experimental points. We have some post-fitting analysis. For instance, it is calculation of the um, Z-effective, which is uh, what we usually do to provide additional input for the trans simulations. Uh, we able to iterate with experimental data, and if we are sure what the sum channels uh, have um, unphysical data, we can easily remove it to provide the smooth fitting of the experimental profiles on the next step. Uh, we can do everything in automated mode if we want to analyze the large uh, data setup, a large database, or we can do it in direct, interactive mode and carefully check each channel for each diagnostic. Uh, when we run trans and do the transport analysis, we also have the built-in metrics for the data consistency check. First of all, it is comparison of the total storage energy from the heat reconstruction or from the magnetic measurements with the trans calculations. Uh, you can see usually we are trying to get the very close agreement. And we also can see the contribution of the fast ion energy for particular discharge. And our metric, it is the uh, agreement with the Newton rate. So usually we also need to get the uh, very close agreement of the transfocalization with the measurements. If we can't get the agreement with the uh, default settings, we can try to adjust the fast ion diffusion coefficients. And we have the several options how to do it. And this, of course, will change distribution of our fast ions and the total plasma pressure. Uh, when we get information of the total plasma pressure and current from the transpiration, we do what we call the full kinetic equilibrium reconstruction. And on this slide, you can see how different the full kinetic equilibrium reconstruction from the just magnetic equilibrium. Uh, the main difference will be on the pressure and current density profiles. So the pressure is more picked because we added a fast time contribution and also we added the kinetic pressure from our experimental measurements. That's why usually you would see the more accurate structure of the plasma profiles at the age. And the current density profile, when we do just the magnetic uh, reconstruction, usually we don't have information about the current density distribution, just the total density. That's why profile looks like the simplest form what we can have with a spline approximation. But with the more accurate uh, information from trans, we able to get the accurate uh, plasma current density profile. And of course, there will be some difference for the safety factor and the plasma shape. When we have the full kinetic equilibrium reconstruction, what we believe is accurate, we can move to the predictive analysis. The predictive workflow looks like we do the mapping of experimental measurements to the new accurate equilibrium when we generate the U files for the transport analysis, for the power balance analysis. Uh, it's very similar to the previous steps, but in this case, we don't calculate the current density diffusion. We don't solve the current density diffusion equation. We are interested just 
in power balance to get the sources or it's a total heat fluxes which we can measure in experiments but can only get it from the modeling when we do the prediction of plasma profiles using the TGR solver which uses the TGLF and NEO models to calculate the turbulent and neoclassical fluxes when we compare our prediction with experimental data and if there are no acceptable agreement what we expected we can revise our workflow we can change the fitting method for instance we can change some settings uh, for the transfer population maybe we want to change the time steps to reduce the statistical error maybe we also we just want to change some settings for the turbulent model and when we do the comparison again uh, on this slide i want to show in more details how we do the prediction of plasma profiles using the tjar model uh, tjar solver this is a newton solver and on the zero iteration, we start with experimental profiles. We can reconstruct the plasma gradients from experimental profiles. And uh, we calculate the fluxes using the TGLF and NEO models. When these fluxes, which is calculated, they are compared with the power balance, what we got from trans. And if there are some disagreement, TGRO changes the gradients of plasma profiles and recalculates the uh, fluxes using TGLF and NEO. So this uh, iterative uh, procedure continues until we get the good convergence, until um, TGRO results are in a good agreement with the power balance. But situation is more complicated because usually we calculate the dynamic heat exchange term, which uh, reflects the power exchange between electron and ion temperature, because we are trying to predict the profiles and um, with the new profile shapes, the dynamic heat exchange term will be slightly different from what we got from the power balance. But when we got uh, came to the final iteration, we found the gradients what satisfies uh, uh, our target value. We can reconstruct the plasma profiles. Uh, when we predicted the plasma profiles, we also can uh, get some details about the transport mechanism driving the turbulent transport. If we know what the contribution of neoclassical flux is very small and the electron flux is completely turbulent, we can do a linear stability analysis to identify the frequencies and growth rates of unstable modes. And when we do the scan of plasma gradients to identify what types of modes are unstable, for instance, we know what the ETG turbulences they are driven by the electron temperature gradients. That's why we vary with value compared to the experimental one and see if we change only the uh, but only uh, growth rates in the high wave number region. Uh, we if we see the changes in the low wave number region, we know what the, there is another type of mods. And if we see what there is good agreement uh, with experimental data by the uh, teacher of prediction and the teacher left model, we can be confident in identifying uh, what type of mods drives the uh, transport and um, contributes to the turbulent heat flux in this region. Uh, in the conclusion, I just want to summarize what 
we study the uh, transport on low aspect ratio spherical tokamaks because it might be different compared to the conventional machines and it is different. Uh, we use the onfit framework, which is a powerful tool for the integrated modeling. And uh, so far we adapted the onfit workflow for the NSTX machine to obtain the full kinetic equilibrium to do the interpretive power balance analysis and do the prediction. And here I want to finish and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Galina, for the exhaustive uh, and uh, quite comprehensible uh, introduction to the Yomfit uh, suite. I'm pretty sure uh, there will be some questions from the users uh, or possible future users. While the audience is still waiting for the questions, I have a question uh, myself. Um, um, how, how, uh, how important it is. Uh, it's a very general question, so pardon me if it comes across as a very naive one, but there are no naive questions as far as I understand in science. Um, how, how important it is to, to keep advancing um, in development of such, uh, such integrated modeling tools when it comes to uh, design and also, let's say, benchmarking for, uh, for, uh, for up-and-coming uh, reactors. How, how, what, what, Will be the scenario if we didn't have such tools? Um, did I understand correctly what you're asking? How such workflow might be important for the prediction of the next step devices? Right, right, in general, yes. Uh, so our main goal to be sure what the analysis, what we are doing right now, it's uh, most accurate. And uh, because we do our predictions sometimes based on the input of experimental data, that's why it directly depends on the quality of the data and uncertainty of both equilibrium and experimental measurements. And also we're trying usually to identify how sensitive the predictive solution to the small variations of the input data. That's why it is very convenient to use such frameworks because it significantly streamlines the analysis process and allow, allow us to check many different options. And kind of all of this we do to be sure what the predictive tools, what we do, they are robust and we can use them and trust the prediction of the next step devices. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, it answers my question. Um, uh, do you think it will be a bit too sensitive uh, to uh, the profiles and inputs generated by the synthetic diagnostics? Because uh, even though with more and more uh, accuracy, the new synthetic diagnostics are, are being developed, but still that's all uh, machine-generated data starting from some sort of input. Do you think that uh, OMFIT uh, could uh, could use input from from synthetic diagnostics, so you need properly like actually experimentally measured uh, uh, profiles, etc., uh, for for inputs and for reliable predictions. Um, I think synthetic diagnostics they really can improve the quality of our predictive tools, because uh, usually if we don't know any data or um, any sources, kind of we use the additional models in uh, our workflow. We add, incorporate additional models for, for instance, 
neutral uh, Newton's measurements because it's very difficult to get uh, data from experiments. That's why we need to uh, simple equations to simulate the penetration of um, molecules and atoms into the plasma. But with synthetic diagnostics, we can just replace all of the unknown variables. And then I believe we will get a more accurate solution. And also with synthetic diagnostics, we will have the more metrics for the validation of our transport models, especially the turbulent models. I think now it's kind of the main problem to do the extensive validation of the transport models. All right, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, so answers the question perfectly. Um, I don't see any hands raised, so then I could, uh, you know, safely say that uh, we, uh, we are done for today. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Galina, for uh, the the introduction and uh, and and very 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 in depth. Uh, uh, let's say layout flowchart for how to use this tool. I'm pretty sure uh, we will be hearing about it uh, more in the future. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much.